If you could please silence or turn your cell phones off at this time, um, and we will be starting the services with the Navy Honors.
Um, my name is Diane Nass, and that's one of Dad's daughters. There are six of us total, a couple of sons. But um, we're going to get started. Uh, it's pretty casual. But um, I see people that he worked with here. I see neighbors. I see family, tons of family. Dad had a lot of family. I see um, our customers, our, our no, they're not customers. We are their customers from the Golden Goose. <laughs> Dad loved to pay for my treasures at the Golden Goose. He never let me pay for anything. He always insisted on buying treasures for me. <laughs> um, this morning at the hotel, I, I woke up to see what time it was. And I looked and I had a reminder on my phone and it said, Call Dad. Because today's his birthday. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to have a good time and we're going to celebrate because he kept, he kept um, inviting people to his birthday. He's 90 years old, okay? So, have fun. <laughs> Robert Rizu, I'm uh, the grandson of Manofre Tafoya, I'm the daughter of Dolores Tafoya. Um, I was asked by the family to read a little bit about my grandpa, so bear with me. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning. On behalf of the Tafoya family, I would like to welcome you and thank everyone for joining us to celebrate the life of Manofre Tafoya. Before I begin, my family asks that we all share the moment of silence and remember this for a moment. So I'll bow our heads for just a little bit and think of them in your own way. Nofre Tafoya, also known to his friends and family as Taffy, was born to Cecilia Tafoya and Inez Chavez in Winslow, Arizona on April 8, 1929. He was the oldest of five children who were raised during the Great Depression. The family moved to Prescott when Nofre was around five years old. He started kindergarten at Washington Grade School in Prescott in 1936. <clears throat> After his mother died in August of 1943, he quit school. He worked at various jobs before enlisting in the Navy on March 23, 1944, at the young age of 14 years old. He served at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii for three years. He loved the Navy. He found that through the Navy he was able to serve his country and grow as a young man. He was a baker in the Navy, and the memory of baking loaves of yeast bread, cinnamon rolls, and other meals for his family were loved by all of us. On April 7th, 1947, the day before his 18th birthday, he received an honorable discharge from the Navy. After his return home, he met and fell in love with a young woman named Armelina Brito and her two little girls, Victoria and Susanna. Onofre and Armelina were married on December 26, 1947. The family moved to Prescott where Nofre found work at the VA hospital. During the time in Prescott, another baby girl, my Aunt Inez, was born. The family then moved to Phoenix, where he started a job at the Phoenix Brickyard. Three more children were born in Phoenix, my mom Dolores, my uncle Martin, and my uncle Ricky, or Ricardo. During his employment at the Brickyard, the work was hard and not well paying, but he always loved the smell of fresh brick and loved the hard labor. Realizing he needed a better paying job for his large family, he decided to take the advice of a friend who wrote him a letter which included a $20 bill and asked that he move to Salmon Well and apply at the Salmon Well Copper Mines. Leaving his family behind <coughs> until he could save enough money to rent a home for them to join him, he lived out of his car in Mammoth. He was able to reloc relocate his family to Oracle and then move them to Seminole, where they lived for the next 16 years. My grandfather bought a piece of land just outside of Mammoth and built his lifelong family home. Arnofre and Armelina finished raising Ricky in that house in Mammoth, and after he graduated from high school, they added to the Tafoya family by adopting two girls, Sonia and Laura. 
In May of 1987, my nana passed away. My grandfather continued his commitment to his wife and family <clears throat> and Marie raised the remaining two daughters alone. Being a copper miner was the job that defined who my grandfather was. He had started up as a shoe tapper at the mine, and by the time he retired, he had worked his way up the ranks, and his final position with Magma Copper was as an engineer in the training department. He wrote two books about the mine, Mother Magma and Los Mineros. His books were a testament to his passion and dedication to mining and the men he worked alongside him. Being a miner allowed him to earn a good living, take care of his large family, and satisfy that need for hard work. After retirement, he filled his free time by traveling, reading, writing, and gardening, with, which he did with the same passion that he did with all the jobs he held. He would use the fruits and vegetables he grew in his that he grew to feed his family, to give away to others, and later in life would set up a roadside table where he would sell starter plants to passing motors. No one would ever be able to I'm sorry, no one would ever be able to visit my grandfather's home and not leave without a bag full or two of fresh fruits and vegetables. His thirst for knowledge was satisfied by the many books he read, which eventually drove him to travel the world. My grandfather's travels took him to China, Israel, and Egypt. On one of these trips, he met Pei Zeng Wang, and one of the rest of us is Allison. We brought to America and married in 2002. When my grandfather discovered he was ill, he wanted to live the rest of his life as he always had. He wanted to live it to the fullest and enjoy the visits with the most important people in his life, his family and close friends. On February 23, 2019, my grandpa passed away in his home at 2 o'clock in the morning. Surrounded by his family. There is no doubt to anyone who knew my grandpa that his life was lived by the sweat of his brow, the pride of a hard day's work, and the fulfillment of love from a house that is needed and extended family, and the peace he made on earth, and the life that is worthy and truly touched those he spoke with for many throughout his life. I'd just like to thank all of you again for coming. And if anybody else would like to come up and say a word about my grandpa, I'm more than happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Vern Fisher. I met uh, Onofre Tafoya in 1973 when I went to work in the dispensary that they had out at the mine. And, uh, he'd stop in every now and then and talk to me and he told me some interesting stories about his life, and just some interesting stories. And uh, I love the <coughs> times that I spent with him. Uh, like Walter Tafoya, I spent uh, four years in the United States Navy. In fact, I was a hospital foreman there, so that's what got me the job in the dispensary. <coughs> and uh, uh, throughout the years that uh, I was there at uh, Magma Copper Company, BHP, uh, uh, we'd often uh, see each other in passing, and, and we talked together quite a bit, and uh, um, I referred to him as a chum, a pal, uh, and, a, and a good friend. And after we both retired, after they shut down the mine, I uh, would see my favorite place of meeting him was in uh, uh, Walmart. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> in fact, that's where I see most of the people that I know in San <laughs> And, uh, and one day he invited me, he wanted me, myself, and my wife Dolores to come up and, uh, and uh, spend some time with him at his place. And we did this quite often. Uh, Allison's a very good cook. 
<laughs> and she fed me a lot of good meals. And we continued our relationship. And uh, so we, we even come to feel as a member of the family. And we enjoyed this very much. I'll always cherish my memory of uh, an old friend of Boya. And uh, he's a member of my family. And I feel a member of his family. And I leave this with you, uh, hoping that uh, I'll become to, uh, to know some of the other members of his family. And I'll always cherish my relationship with Allison. In fact, uh, we referred to uh, his grandson as, uh, as Andrew, Andrew Petoy. In fact, when I work, I work at the library as a volunteer, and I had him come up and work with me when I was there. And he put me to shame. He knows those computers and uh, <laughs> and uh, coffee machines and all those machines we have in there better than I do. He really put me to shame. I didn't tell him this, but uh, I kind of hid back there and uh, let him do a lot of the work that was on the computer. So, like I say, I feel as a, as a member of his family. And uh, thank you all. Most of you here know who I am. I'm a neighbor for over 30, 33 years. I, I had something that I wanted to, to say. I'm not going to be long-winded. I'm a very sensitive person. I love Taffy like a father. He treated me like a son. I treated him like a father also. We exchanged labor. When he needed help, I'd go over. When I needed help, he'd come over. We had a lot of good times together. We sat 
talked. He'd invite me over and I'd come in the patio and he says, come on in, sit down. Tell me all about your fantastic life in Mammoth, Arizona. <laughs> so, I, I, this, I, I'm real forgetful as to what I wanted to say, except that his family, his wife, his children, his grandchildren, I think I one time or other I met 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 them met them all. I'm I'm very fond of of, uh, of of his family. They they treat me like like part of the family. And I feel like I am part of the family. And so the only thing I have to say right now is, is Happy had a real good life. I probably won't be too far behind him. Uh, <laughs> I, I have no plan to join him now right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just at a loss for words right now, other than to say that I love Mr. Tavoya. Taffy, his family. I know it says in the literal share not to miss him, to miss him, but not for very long. I've been missing him since the day that Allison called me at three o'clock in the morning and told me he had passed away. And even though I was expecting it, it's hard to take. It's hard to take. We got up at that time in the morning, went over there, and spent time with the family. And uh, so I will miss him, like the says in the brochure, but not for very long. I thought I'd never forget him. I, I think I've mourned enough for him now, so I want to let him go. That's, that's the way I remember him. Such a good friend, such a good neighbor. Thank you.
This is some indictus. Indictus is on the soul. Memory. Uh, the last stanza. It matters not how straight the gate, how charming. Punishments to scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I love my dad very much.
well. Every time I follow him, uh, everywhere we, uh, he, he taught me, I follow him to Golden Goose. Oh, this Golden Goose is his famous there, famous place. So over there, I, we, we met a lot of good people, good friends, like um, this one, Golden Goose. Uh, we we have good friend uh, Sandy and uh, oh, one minute. <laughs> Stephanie. Stephanie, Stephanie, yes, <laughs> and uh, but he uh, he has he likes we always I think we almost uh, once. A week we went. So now I, I'm always. Sometimes I'm, I'm very sad because now I go to Golden Goose by myself. Um, so I don't know uh, how to say this is for me. It's very. Um, Difficult time, so I don't know. But I, I believe later. I want honor for always in my heart, live in my heart. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy, and I thanks. Um, very much for my husband, so it's okay. <laughs> so and finally, um, I thank all wonderful family and uh, friends come here uh, enjoying this meeting. Thanks everybody.
dad was so handsome, strong, smart, hardworking, and very, very family orientated. He never finished school, but he read a lot and educated himself. He decided to, um, that he wanted to get his GED, and he went out and took the test, and of course he aced it. And another one of his accomplishments was the mine, where he rose from labor to the very top, as you've heard here before. And after he retired, he wrote uh, and published two books, which you've heard of now, Mother Magma and, um, and Los Mineros. With Mother Magma, he wrote about life, hard work, and mining. And with the second book, he talked and explained the mind, things about the mind, and the people that worked it. He did many public speeches all over the place about his books. I used to work for um, Bank of America at one time, and we had um, a cultural um, appreciation day. I asked him if he would speak, and of course he said yes. He also did a talk at the VA hospital in Phoenix. He enjoyed it so much, and it was fantastic. Dad loved to talk. He could go on forever when he was with his speeches. Uh, besides these two books, he also wrote two poems. They're, these were personal and very beautiful. The first one was called, I Always Came Home. And he made copies of these for all of us. And the second one was called, um, the bonds that tie. This one was a little different because he wrote it as if uh, mom was narrating it. And so I would like to read just the very beginning of it. He wrote, the bonds are not broken, the ties still hold fast. The widow, the orphan, the father, with trembling heart will meet again. And the rest is a very beautiful moving love poem. So. I will just leave that for now. He was so smart and inspirational. And today, we come to celebrate his life and also his birthday. We celebrated many birthdays with him, some big and some quiet and small. In his later years, uh, he uh, became very emotional. And he would cry every time we sang happy birthday to him. And he said, he was overwhelmed with all the love that we showed him. And uh, he told us the same thing from his deathbed. He felt so overwhelmed with all the love surrounding him. Today, I hope he's feeling that love. Today, I know what if he could tell you, he would say, don't mourn for me. Celebrate life itself. Enjoy yourself and celebrate life just like he did, to the very fullest. So today, uh, we'd like to celebrate Dad's birthday. Uh, we even brought a cake. <laughs> but uh, I just want to say, happy birthday, Dad. We love you. Without even saying anything to them that I had a problem, 
by the time they left. My problem was sir was was fulfilled, solved. And I don't know how. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna miss you so much. I love each and every one of you and our family. Didn't realize how big his family was. I wish I could reach and every one of you individually. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Amanda. Some of you know me as Mondi or Mondi. You don't know me as Amanda. I'm Mary's daughter. And uh, the Onofre's niece. The Onofre and Theo Jr. are. Where, as the mom said, the matriarchs of this family kind of helped us all together, gave us some incredible memories. Seminole is a place to come. It's been happening for 27 years. Um, I have some really amazing memories from when I was a kid in the kitchen making popovers. Um, over the years, coming with mom just to come visit, say hi, watch the house grow and change. and. Uh, this man was so humble. He was extremely humble and had no idea of the love that actually surrounded him. Over the last month or so, I was blessed and given the honor by the family to walk him through his journey. And every time somebody came in, or he'd ask me to come to the room with him by myself, and he would why do these people love me so much? <laughs> and we'd sit and we'd just kind of look at each other and go, because you are you, because you have so much love that you have given to so many people. So many memories. And everybody's memory is different as a father, as an uncle, as a friend. It didn't matter who you were or whether you were blessed. You were feeling and so, I just want to say that I don't think one took one. I think this entire family will be part of my life. Thank you very much. I loved hearing um, his stories and 
Uh, he would always be the first one I would see. Um, I never see Allison first, I always see Kathy first. And, and we talk for a minute, and I'd say, Is Allison with you? And he's like, Oh, yeah, she's in here. <laughs> so then I'd wander about until I found you. Um, so uh, he, he will always be a, a part of the Golden Goose family and, and the spirit that lives there. And, uh, I just, I, I'm so grateful that I was allowed an opportunity to know him. And uh, he and, you know, say that made me a better person. Thank you.
the only grandfather I had ever. And I didn't need another one because he was enough to do that one. He was an educator. He was like a father. And he was grumpy. I don't know what Uncle Ray was talking about. <laughs>
So I finally talked him into it and I trimmed him a little and he told me, you can put this here and put that there. He had every, a certain way to do everything. And he still helped me push the wheelbarrows around. And I was afraid he was gonna fall. And then the next time I came back a couple weeks later, he slowed down, but he would still tell stories. And you know, he was so smart. I love to read, but I read fiction. And I don't think there's one fiction book in any of his library. <laughs> he goes, what do you like to read? Stephen King, romance <laughs> novels. And, oh, I don't have none of those. So he took me to the back and go pick out some stories. So I was working through them all. And, he told me which ones are good, and he had my daughters go pick out books, too. It's hard, because I'm happy for him, because he was ready. And, but I look at my mama and all the kids, and I see stuff, how sad they're all going to miss him. But I know he's happy. And one of the questions I asked him before he passed away was, What's your favorite memory? And he's, oh, there's so many. What's your favorite feeling? <clears throat> love. Love. He said, growing up, the love you have for your mother, the love you have for your father, your siblings, the love you have for your children, your wife. Just love, whether it's bleeding or long lasting. childish love, that's the best feeling, because it's pure, and we love you guys so much. I'm going to miss you. I'm really happy that my kids got to meet him. So, I love him so much. Thank you. Older than I, and I was younger one of 
that, that desolation there. And they'd run off and play. They were a few years older than me. And they'd run off in the desert. And run off and they'd be in behind on purpose. Because <laughs> I'd scraggle along. And I'd be sad, and I'd maybe just be kind of out on the patio. And he'd put me in the wheelbarrow and he'd take me around the yard. And he never said anything. He would just smile and be kind. To I think that's what I remember the most. He's just the kindest man. I'm so I'll miss him. He's up there and we're both on our knees doing stuff, you know, pounding his broken nails and he had moved away from me a little bit. And I heard the uh, heard his, <laughs> the ladder had fallen and I heard my grandfather say, Oh he said that's word. And I was like, Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he, was at me and he looks at me and he's like, What are you looking at? You never heard a grown man say a bad word? <laughs> my love for channel 8 um, because that was the only channel other than two other channels you could get at his house. <laughs> so uh, to this day, I still record uh, programming off of channel 8. Um, so he did that for me. I always watched the cooking shows with him when I would go visit and my poor husband would be on the roof working and I would be inside with Grandpa talking about the latest book he was reading 
or the, we would be watching movies, or we would be watching Channel 8 and watching cooking shows, and Bobby would come in real sweaty and dirty, and he'd be looking at us like, this is great, I'm here working, and you guys are in here lounging around, and, and Grandpa would be like, hey, you got more work to do, go on outside. So, um, those kind of memories I really cherish, because I, I, I learned so much from him, um, such an educated man. But well, one of my favorite stories is one time Bobby had to go work for his grandma. And I had stayed back home and he wanted to call me. Um, but as most of you know, Grandpa's phones were all rotary time. <laughs> um, so he wanted to call me. And so Grandpa said, go use the phone um, just outside in the patio, which was a rotary phone. And so he, uh, he went and picked up the phone and couldn't obviously dial the number because they weren't a clock of punch numbers. So he rotary dialed the operator, and the operator's like, well, just go ahead and dial the number. So my husband started to dial the number on the phone, and the operator on the other end was like, sir, 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 um, are you using a rotary phone? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I'm at my grandpa's house. He, he has no other phones. He gets all his phones from the Golden Goose. <laughs> he had, I don't know if any of you remember, he had the box of phones. So if one phone didn't work, he could pull out, you know, he could pull out the box and one of them would eventually work. Um, and the operator, my husband was saying, the operator was laughing so hard. And she was telling other operators, this guy's trying to make a call from a rotary phone. She was like, sir, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll get you through. <laughs> Because you weren't a, a, uh, a, a grandchild don't, does not mean that when you would go visit him, you wouldn't work. Um, many of you have been in the kitchen and the living room area of Grandpa's house. My husband and I laid that time. Um, I, I remember doing that. And it was... It was, it was really, I, I just, I really cherished that time with him. Because like I said, he didn't have um, a grandpa. He was just a good man. He, he was just a, an honest, hardworking, strong, humble man. And I know that all he wanted was for his children and his grandchildren and his brothers and sisters and his cousins. He thrived off of just being around his family. And I am so incredibly blessed to have married into such a wonderful, wonderful family that accepted me, accepted my children, and I'm so honored that I continue to be a part of this family and my kids have his blood because I know there's nothing in this world that they can't do. Thank you, Grandpa. Happy birthday. Phoenix and 
and visit. And um, one time it was Christmas time, and he would take me to um, downtown Phoenix to see the lights. And we would just go in his little little Datsun truck, and we'd park, and then we would just like walk around and and just look at all the lights. And, and we would sit there, and he would tell me that let's just you know take in all the beauty of the city. And then um, of course there's the um, the trips to Value Village. <laughs> so he, he knew all the people in Scope out in Phoenix. And he would take me and go with him, and he'd let me pick you know a little something out. Um, but um, you know to all my aunts and my uncles and all my cousins, I love you guys. So, so much, and I'm so happy to be part of this family. I'm truly gonna miss him as well. Thank you. <laughs> I know there are more stories, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, we're gonna watch this slideshow.